rant there, Lauren. I, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I get a bit passionate about this one because I, I see it as something that really needs to be fixed. And I think, a, a little bit like sustainability, I think we need to fix it, but the way that we actually get the, the real buy-in rather than just the, the tick box marketing nice stuff, it is by convincing the, the money men um, that there's a val inherent value. And, you know, it's value at work, and I think there's value for work as well. I, I've ranted for ages, and I've thrown a million of one suggested to, to divergent points we can go in there. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, Rob, I'm going to sit back and let you talk uh, talk at me, because I've just done it to you. But I think I, you, there's a seed of a really important idea there, but I'm not articulating it well enough. Uh, I, I agree with you. I It frustrates me when I see companies and organisations uh, always... LinkedIn's probably one of them, but always look how great we are. Yeah. <laughs> and it could be we've got more women here, or they have your pictures with a number of diverse individuals on there, and it, it paints a really nice picture. What I don't know is how much how true is that if you went to look into their look at their workforce. Now, one approach that I see a lot of companies going down, and it's it's very current, is they they may not say it, they maybe say the words like aspirations, but they are quotas. They are trying to meet a certain number of um, a percentage from a lower socioeconomical background or different ethnicities or different sexuality or, you know, all these different things. But but they're quotas. They are tick boxes. And, and what... <sighs> What's happening when they're creating these tick boxes is it's a double negative. <laughs> there are people feeling that, you know, always having that question in their mind. Did I get the job, the role, because I am the most qualified candidate and I competed and was successful in this role? Or was I here to tick a box? So there's that doubt that happens. And then you've got the other side of it where someone comes into that role and let's say they do believe that they were the most competitive for it. And then you get some, I'm not going to say it's probably a guy that says to them, oh, you're the diversity hire. That is not a good scenario. Um, not for anybody. Not, that does not set up that person for success, male or female. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what I've also started seeing sometimes is where they create deputy roles where someone could be a manager and for so long it's always been you go from engineer to manager role and then suddenly there's a role created that is deputy manager and into that role you get women you get people where English maybe wasn't their first language you get people who are not from a western country and once you start seeing these things you can't unsee it <laughs> So one of the things I'm really passionate about right now is the first step to any change is really understanding and acknowledging what's actually happening right now. And that's why I'm really happy to share stories. Sometimes they're not even my own. I've, I've never had that deputy manager role, but I see it. And so now I point it out. That, that was actually where the book came from. It was dinner one night with this lady. I was telling some stories. And she said to me, you just kept us all captivated for the last hour. There was a group of us. And then she said, why don't you just, you just want to put a spotlight on all mm -hmm. the bleep that is still going yeah, yeah. on in the industry. And, and that's where the tagline of the book came from. Because the biggest thing for me is, again, to create change, you need to start with understanding exactly what's going on. I, I suppose one question that I'll put playing devil's advocate it's funny when you were when you were describing, you know, um, quotas, and, and then you were describing the, the, the challenge of somebody coming into it into a role thinking, "Am I the best qualified?" My 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 mind just automatically went to and also, and then you, you kind of went to it yourself, and also there's that well, you're the diversity part. You're not here because you're in that place. You're here because you hit a quota, and that just that's just so such a toxic seed to have in any workforce. Um, but we you know, but it. We both, we both, both of us acknowledged it and saw it because it, it, it's real, and, and we would see that. And we probably everyone watching this will have experienced, or at least have, have had that thought and known somebody in that environment that would go there. Um, I suppose one question I have there is, um, again, to play that kind of devil's advocate position, 
somebody that's saying, okay, but what you're talking about now, Lauren, you know, we've come so far. You know, there's so much, you know, the, the, the diversity, inclusion, equity conversation dominates the, the, you know, I can't go on LinkedIn without seeing a, a reference to it. We've seen all the all of these moves. We've moved so far away from where you were in Aberdeen, you know, 18 years ago, was it? I think you said you started your career. <coughs> um, you know, what more can we do? And, and I think that that's going to be a, a real big pushback on actually achieving success because I think there's a lot of bluster and like, like I referenced LinkedIn specifically because there's a lot of bluster there's a lot of noise on social media of look at us we're, 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 we're doing the right thing we're, we're, we're raising the right flag to it. We're, 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 we're paying lip service to this and I think we need to go past that but I can see an awful lot of people the laggards within the bathtub um, graph or the, the, the other way around the curve but Belkin um, I can see them kind of saying that's where the resistance is going to come from it's like well it's everywhere already so how do, how do we marry those two things because what we're doing isn't working clearly yet there's an awful lot more noise than there was ever before and that to me seems to be building a, a, a counterintuitive resistance uh, your thoughts around that I mean, if I think about what is it that companies actually want? Mm. So you want to have the most profitable business. You want to have mm -hmm. an energized workforce. Yep. You want people who just light up when they come to work every day. And you want everyone to feel that they are supported in their career development and, you know, they can reach the stars. Um, some people may not want to. They may be very comfortable in, in the role they're at with no further aspirations. And that's completely fine. You know, different strokes for different folks. But what you don't want is, and I would argue, I don't think any company would consciously want this. And when I say companies, I'm meaning leadership at those organizations. How would they feel if they knew someone in their company was being held back because of the color of their skin or because of their gender or because of their neurodiversity? Something, you know, where I'm going with this. That's the crux of this for me. It's not DE&I for DE&I's sake. Uh, that's where I talk about, think about the top box ticking, and that's just not... I understand why people do it, because it's a very tangible way of assessing where, where a company is. And, and, you know, that bit's fine. But they need to keep in mind, the goal is not to have a representative from every country, of every language, of every background, because that, that's just probably impossible. <laughs> but, but what you want to do is make sure that everybody feels that they have an equitable opportunity to be able to progress their careers. And not one person is favoured over the other because of their background. So how do you do that? Well, that... that <laughs> That's the question that I think we need to be focusing on. And, and for me, when I look at companies where they show, you know, top of the house, we've got 50-50 men and women, or we've got a female CEO, look at the number of um, high-level, high-ranking high women we've got. My challenge to them is go and show us what's a level beneath that and a level beneath that. You know, what does that look like? Have, have these leaders actually gone and had conversations with individuals within their organizations at these different levels and speaking with people who one are like them and two are not like them to get a really good understanding of what is their experiences and i know i'm i'm really pushing this on the leaders but i really do think it starts at the top yeah, they, they need to embed that inclusive workplace culture right from the start yeah 